Peace be with you, David Bying. How are you, sir? And peace be with you too, sir. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Absolutely great, I now, must say. Now, now you're uh, legally blind. From a young age, you were diagnosed as being legally blind. Is that what it's called? Well, totally blind totally in my blind. case. I cannot see a thing. You cannot see a thing? Not even light. And, and this is, uh, when was this de determined? This was, I believe, shortly determined after I was born. And that was due to as many kids in my generation at that time that were born too much oxygen in the incubator. Of course, at that time, they had no way of monitoring it, so that's what oftentimes happened. And in my case, it was blindness. Now, you're also a Cubs fan, we see? <laughs> I'm a Cubs fan. I am a White Sox fan. I'm a Bulls fan. I'm a Blackhawks fan. And, well, I think I just said it all. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a sports fan. You're a sports fan. Uh, tell us now, I'm, I open up the show and I talk about uh, the heart and how many people they can see with their eyes, but their hearts have become blind. And this is a verse from the verbatim word of God uh, that all, uh, God Almighty talks about in the Quran. It's the hearts that have gone blind, but there's something uh, unique and special about your heart. And that's why we're here today, because your journey started over how many years ago? You, you told us about 10, 15 years ago that you, were, you, you got your first exposure to Islam? Actually, my journey as far as my interest in Islam has been roughly about 10 to 15 years. It could have been longer. It's only that for so long, I, along with many of us as Americans, have had heard so much negative uh, media concerning Islam and, and Muslims, but there comes a time in one's life, and I said this a moment ago when we were just sitting here talking, that there, come, there comes a point in time where one should say, look, you know what, I'm going to check this out for myself. I don't believe what I'm hearing. I, I can't believe all that I'm hearing. There's something that I am not hearing, and what I'm not hearing is what is the truth and so it's only been recently that I was able to actually check it out for myself I have a cousin who well her husband comes from Iraq and his side of the family I don't know if they're still practicing Muslims or, or not but when he came to the United States he he married my cousin back in 1979, and uh, I, I must say she has learned to, or she had learned to prepare a lot of good, delicious food. They yeah. have a lot of good, delicious food, I, I can tell you that much. And while he's not been practicing his faith as such here, um, I believe he still does follow some of the basics and uh, was that kind of your first exposure at, at that he time was him? he was actually my first open exposure where I had actually met somebody or got to know somebody and they became part of our family and well it was a slow process but my interest began to grow very, very, very slow. Now, he did adopt the ideas and customs of what most of us in the United States believe, but even at that time, I, along with many of you out there, were still hearing about, well, that Saddam Hussein and Ayatollah Khomeini and all that, and we were being told by the media that well, this is what Islam is. Ayatollah Khomeini, he, he is what Islam is all about. Um, Saddam Hussein, he is what Islam is all about. But yet the two, these two countries were at war with each other from 1979 until 1989. And then all of a sudden, 
and, and this is the interesting but rather disturbing thing about all of this. All of a sudden in 1991, Saddam Hussein becomes uh, our enemy. He becomes our enemy. And then everything just kind of turns around and I'm thinking, what, you know, what, what is this? You know, what is this all about? First of all, we're saying he, he was our friend. Then, now all of a sudden he's our enemy. And yet at the same time, we're being told by the media, this is what Islam is all about. So your mind, your mind is on, even though you can't see, your heart is open, your mind is working right, you're listening and you're putting the pieces together. We're going to take a break, and we're going to write back uh, with more of your story here on The Dean Show. Don't go anywhere. Please subscribe to The Dean Show. Follow us on our official Facebook and Twitter pages in the links below. Please also help support The Dean Show by making a donation in the link below. Welcome back to The Dean Show with our special guest, David. And I am David. David, tell us... Uh, so most people, they hear many of, they've heard many of these negative things being associated with Islam, a lot of the false media hype, the propaganda, and they run from it. But you, ru you ran towards it. Is that right? Yes, I think I was running towards it rather than away from it. Although there, I, I must say, I think there, there, there is a time when we all run from it and we don't want to really find out the truth. There's, there's so much to my story, and we only have a limited amount of time. My story could probably take uh, several hours, but since as we do have a limited amount of time, I'm going to tell you as much of the basics as I can tell you. And that was, and that is, that I began to run toward what I was hearing. And... What ran me toward it was... Towards Islam? Yes, what, what, what ran me toward Islam more so to find out uh, what, what it really is was the negative stuff I was hearing on, on the, the media. Mm -hmm. Now, that may sound crazy to some people. It may sound strange to some people. But I think it's like anything else. If you become blind in the heart uh, as well as blind in the mind and unfortunately there's a lot of people who have become blind in the mind as well and one of my biggest hobbies has always been listening to talk radio now you can learn a lot of things on talk radio and talk TV such as we're doing now but Oftentimes what you learn is the negative as well as the positive. Well, even though I was learning the negative aspects of, of what I was hearing, I still had a desire to run toward what I would have otherwise been running away from. And so... For a short time, maybe I was blind in, in, in the mind, but yet I was still open in the heart. Now, I know for a lot of you folks out there, that's, you might be wondering, how can that be? You know, how, how can you do that? How can you do both? Well, you can. You can, because your mind can play tricks on you. Your mind can, can try to convince you of, of a lot of things that in this case, aren't true. Now, what, what, what was your background? Were you, you were a uh, uh, former, you were a Christian background, Pentecostal, is that right? N well, not of the Pentecostal type. No, I, I've come from a lot of different church backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Most of them uh, Protestant, uh, well, all of them pretty much, you could say, were, were Protestant. I had gone to and or attended a lot of different what, what, churches. What, what wasn't sinking in with you now that you had to go explore something else, a new alternative, a, a way of life? What, what didn't resonate with you from the different churches that you were a part of? Well, my question always was this. 
in Protestantism especially, you have some, well, I'm not going to say all of them, but in Protestantism there's a few that will tell you that we are the one and only true denomination. We're the one and only true church. Of course, the Roman Catholic Church tells you that, tells people that too. We're, we're the one true church. And all other churches are false. And that was something that totally turned me off from even my early adulthood. There was a time when I thought I could believe something like that, that, that it was possible. Uh, I, I was even asking, well, is, what is the one true church? Is there a true church? And if there is, where, how and where would I find such a church? And what would be the indication or the indicator, indicators that that would be the case? And the only answer I was able to come up with then as I was later as all of the denominations we have in our country and in our world today because some of them are worldwide um, it's that many of these folks have their own understanding and interpretations of what you know the Bible teaching is or teachings it's based on all all of what some Buddy's understanding, in many cases, a church leader who might have started a, 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 a particular church, his understanding, and then that understanding becomes the truth to many of that church or, or denomination's followers. And yet, at the same time, we have the Bible, which contradicts itself so much, and in so many places that you really begin to wonder what is the truth so before we go to break tell us now uh, did you have a problem also because you know as, as Muslims we believe in the pure monotheism that God is God Jesus is Jesus that Jesus was sent by God to call people to worship God did you have a problem in your heart accepting that Jesus was one in a trinity that he that he was God part of God a literal son of God did you always question this I always had a question of the concept or doctrine, if you will, of, of the Trinity. I believed it, but I did not have the, the concept of, of why. When I would ask the question of many, of, uh, many Christians, why do we believe in the Trinity, I, the answer I was always given was, well, it's, uh, it's a mystery. It's a mystery. And at the time, I thought, well, you know, maybe it's possible that what God teaches could very well be a mystery. So uh, I, I didn't question it at first. However, let me just say, having said all of that, let me just say that there are a few Christian um, groups that do not believe in the Trinity. There are a few that do not believe in the Trinity, but the vast majority of mainline Christendom believes in that concept. They believe in the concept of, of the Trinity. And let's, let, let's hold on right there. They're signaling we've got to go to break. I don't mean to cut you off. We're going to be right back with more of your story. Please subscribe to The Dean Show. Follow us on our official Facebook and Twitter pages in the links below. Please also help support The Dean Show by making a donation in the link below. Back here with our special guest, David. Uh, David, it's an honor to have you with us here on The Dean Show. Thank you for being with us. I was uh, told about your unique story from the people at the mosque. You actually, how did you end up in the mosque now? How did I end up in the mosque? Well, it was just a decision of finding out where a mosque would be. I live on the north side of Chicago, so uh, every place I go, everything I might want to attend has to be on the north side due to limited transportation uh, capabilities and abilities. Uh, so I also meet in my travels, a lot of taxi cab drivers who here in Chicago are of 
the Muslim faith. And I think one of the real, real, real uh, honest to goodness turning points was being able to talk to some of those cab drivers and having them tell me about their faith and what it means to them. And I think that was the, the biggest turning point in having been able to talk to these folks. You know, that is the... That the, was a turning the, point. You got, you got to spend a lot of time with the cab drivers who are Muslim, and they started to uh, share with you the message of Islam. I started asking them a lot of questions, and they, well, there was one or two in particular that really shared with me uh, their, their faith and their understanding and their, their love for Islam, their love for the faith. So I decided to make the final uh, move, and that was to find a mosque. There are several, I'm sure, on the north side, and that was the community center um, over there on Elston. Yes. So I decided to uh, check out that one, and well, here I am. Here, here, here we are. Yes. So many people are are not courageous enough, uh, or maybe tied up with many of the material things, and they forget about the heart. And that's what the Dean Show is about, encouraging people to think about their purpose, the purpose of life, because we're going to leave this transitory life really soon. It's only temporary. Everything that we do now here is going to reflect where we are in the next life. And that message now of Islam, uh, did it start to resonate with your heart, you know, the, the call to only worship the Creator, not to worship Jesus, not to worship Muhammad, nothing in creation but only the one who created you? Did, did, that, did that connect with your innate uh, uh, disposition, your heart? I believe that was in my heart for quite some time. I don't know specifically how long it was because I think it was so deep in my heart. It was so deep in my heart that I, I didn't really know when or how it got there, but that it had been there for some time. I mean, I, kn I knew it was there, but it took some time for it to resonate with me. Yes, it did. It took some time. Uh, I can't tell you how much specifically, but I believe it was, well, quite a, quite a long time, quite a, uh, quite a while. Uh, tell us, we're almost out of time. Now, you, you got to spend a little bit of time with the brothers there at the, the masjid, the mosque, uh, many of the cab drivers. Uh, the Muslims, and obviously you know by now, Muslim is simply one who submits to the will of God. That's what it is. Uh, Jesus was a Muslim. Abraham was a Muslim. All the prophets were Muslims who called people to submit to the Creator, not the creation. That's Islam. So uh, Dr. Sabil, who's a very close uh, friend of mine, he told me he also got to spend a few minutes with you. I'd like to, before we conclude, they told me that they actually invited you to become a Muslim and accept Islam, and you had responded. Uh, what did you respond? I responded that I would uh, very much like to. I think it was the invitation by Dr. Seville. Is that how you pronounce his name? Uh, Seville. Seville? Seville, yes. Seville. Yes, it was that in invitation specifically that sort of put the top on everything. It, it, it sort of finalized everything that... Um, what I, uh, as, as far as my interest. So now we're here, and before you conclude, I think many people who are tuning in, uh, they would also, I mean, uh, love to actually see this good news. I mean, it's a wonderful thing when somebody comes to the realization that A, there is a purpose to life, and B, the best one to give me that purpose is the one who created life, to tell me how I need to live. And Islam tells us all of the things that we need to do in this life to be successful. And the one main thing is to declare that what is in our very nature, to give that gratitude and thankfulness to the one who created us alone. And uh, that starts with that declaration of faith. You know, we know that Islam, and I'm sure they, they explain this to you, there's uh, six articles of faith. One is to believe in one and only one God. It's that pure monotheism. To believe in the angels, to believe in these messengers that God sent to deliver this message w uh, to us with, to believe in the books that were revealed, this all probably was gone over with you, uh, to believe in the day of judgment, and this is all the destiny of God. And then there's the five pillars, 
one of which is the declaration that there's nothing worthy of worship except the creator of the heavens and the earth, and that Muhammad is the last and final messenger, and this would obviously, David, include, not exclude, all the messengers that came before him. That would include Jesus, Moses, Abraham, and, and all the other uh, messengers. Now, would you like to, do you agree that there is nothing worthy of worship except the one who created you, the one who created Jesus, the one Jesus worshiped, the one that Jesus called people to worship, the one God? I do, sir. Do you believe that Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a messenger just like Jesus was a messenger, just like Abraham and all the other messengers that God sent out of his love, he sent them to guide humanity with. Do you believe that Muhammad is the last and final messenger sent to mankind? Yes, sir. Beautiful. Now, uh, repeat after me. This is how one enters into Islam. Ashhadu. <laughs> Ashhadu. An la. An la. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashhadu. Wa ashhadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Rasulullah. Rasulullah. What you said, I bear witness. I bear witness. That there's nothing worthy of worship. That there's nothing worthy of worship. Except the creator. Except the creator. Allah. Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness. That Muhammad. That Muhammad. Peace be upon him. Peace be upon him. Is the, is the final messenger of God. The final messenger of Allah. That's it. You are officially uh, a Muslim. This is very simple. It was already in your heart. As soon as you said that this is something I accept in my heart, you've already accepted it. But now for all of your brothers to be able to know you and for the community when they see you now, they're going to see you on TV that they can come and give you the greetings of peace. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, is there anything else that you want to say before we conclude to all those people who were in your situation hearing the news and the negativities and now they end up associating all these bad things with Islam when in actuality Islam teaches the opposite. What, what advice do you have for the people who are uh, seeking the truth? Okay, well, sir, there is absolutely so much I would love to say and maybe I'll have the opportunity to do that amongst the, the community or various communities. But here on this program, I, would, I will invite all of you folks listening. When you hear something I don't care what it is, whether it's about Islam, go and check it out for yourself. I would encourage you to go and meet the folks who belong to and who are a part of a community that you are supposedly hearing about on the media because the media will not always tell you the truth. In fact, the vast majority of time, it does not tell you the truth. Open your hearts and your minds, and if you do believe in God, let him guide your heart. Let him guide your mind, because God, or Allah, is the Almighty. He is all-powerful, and he will guide you and I want to thank my friends here, my newfound friends, for the opportunity to be on this show. Thank you. Your brothers now, not just friends, your brothers in Islam. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Brothers and sisters. Yes, yes. <laughs> thank you. Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. So as we know, God Almighty tells us it's not the eyes that go blind, but the hearts. If the heart is open, if it hasn't been corrupted, and a person is truly seeking to know the truth, the heart will be open to accept it. But are you seeking? Because seek and you shall find. And our brother here is a testimony to that. He cannot physically see, but he saw the truth when it came to him, and he was here on the Dean Show with all of you and myself to accept it, continue to tune in, and take this wonderful advice. Don't believe all the hype. Check into it for yourself and ask the one who created you, the one who Jesus called you to worship because Jesus never called people to worship himself or his mother as a God or anything in creation, but to worship the one who created creation and ask the creator alone to guide you and then start to do some of the legwork and investigate and God Almighty will facilitate a way 
Tune in here every week to The Dean Show. Subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time. Until then, peace be with you. Please subscribe to The Dean Show. Follow us on our official Facebook and Twitter pages in the links below. Please also help support The Dean Show by making a donation in the link below.